One topic that comes up working with basically every moderately advanced horn student is the topic of improving the low range. Hi, this is John Erickson with the Horn Notes video podcast, and our topic today is materials and tips for low horn practice. Entering college, I had a particularly poor low range. I work with a variety of teachers on this topic as books only cover so much. Much is handed on by word of mouth when you get down to it. And then you have to have materials to work from. Among my teachers, the materials that made the most impact on me were the Neuling Etudes and Koprosh in low transpositions, such as the following brief example. In terms of tips during my studies, everyone mentioned dropping the jaw, but you can fool yourself into thinking you're doing things you're not doing. The following video example shows the technique Mike Hatfield introduced me to that finally opened my eyes and helped me sort out my personal low production. The key is putting your thumb on your chin to experience the actual range of motion of your jaw. Notice how much I drop my jaw? It will be very individualized, of course, and I drop more than most, but I think many players need to cultivate a bit wider range of motion of the jaw, making a large, open oral cavity which is combined with lips that are somewhat firm, not loose. That said, when I started teaching, it was clear there was a real lack of materials to teach low range from effectively for the advancing student. This led me to develop a book, which I titled Ultimate Low Horn, and subsequently to focus it into a new publication in 2016, the Bordoni Erickson Low Horn Boot Camp. What I have done is transpose the familiar trombone etudes into new keys, using also an addition as the basis that is in the public domain. First, here is a low example. This edition combines that low version with a version that is presented an octave higher to aid in learning the low range effectively. I discovered that students found it hard to learn the low version as written, so I also present the same etudes up an octave as a learning tool. This allows the student to get the pitches in the ear, which helps a lot in getting the low range going. The following is the same brief example in the upper octave. The underlying idea of the book is that the music used to introduce the low range does not need to be hard. It just needs to be focused to get you in that extreme low range. With production basics worked out, you can move on to materials that are more challenging. In particular, I still like the Neuling Etudes a lot and how he alternates between the treble clef and the old notation bass clef. And of course, there are other effective materials out there for low range production that you can use as well. Thank you for watching and be watching for more in the coming weeks from the Horn Notes video podcast.